Hey guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know. And today, I'm going to react to my um, I love my child, but I don't love motherhood video. I filmed this, I think November last year. So it's been a year and you know, a lot has changed and I thought it would be interesting to react to it. I haven't seen it since I put it out then and I, yeah, want to kind of follow up on that because I feel like having that mindset labeled on me forever is maybe not a great idea. So here we go. I really thought I wasn't going to film today <laughs> because Rook is having a really hard time. But then I figured this is maybe the best situation to be in for um, the video topic. So Rook is on a one nap a day schedule um, and recently he's been refusing that one nap. I don't remember him refusing his nap at all. And it's been a big adjustment. I, I entered it thinking if I approached parenthood with the right mindset and with um, with the ambition I've brought with me in my life that I could conquer it and have it be what I want it to be. Not to say if you have like the life you don't want as a parent that it's your fault, but I just really thought like if I stay on top of this, if I stay positive, sorry the lighting's bad, um, I can have a lovely like joyous life as a parent and um, I can have the freedoms that I want and just take my kid along with me. Yeah, I really, that's been a rude awakening of like thinking that people are such homebodies with children because they've kind of given in to parenthood instead of like choosing um, to be more out there, social, adventurous. And sometimes it's not so much that it's a choice, rather, what battle do you want to pick for that day? Um, like having your child be able to play freely in your home with no stress or taking them somewhere that's really stressful um, because they're getting into things they're not supposed to get into. So like every day you're deciding whether or not you want to take that challenge on. And some days I, I don't want that. And that really oh. was, <laughs> yeah, that really was the case for the first year of life for Rook. He was just dragged along everywhere I went. Um, babies, as long as you don't have any issues with them, with like breastfeeding or colic or whatever, um, they're pretty straightforward. Like you feed them and they play and they sleep, as long as they sleep. I love the baby stage. I am reminded now that I love it, now having a baby again. It really was kind of once Rook turned one and became more of, I've heard it before, like tabby, like toddler baby, that my mindset started to shift because again, like I'm saying in this video, you can do a lot of things with a baby, most babies. If your baby cries all the time, that's a lot more difficult. But most of the time you can take a baby anywhere, pretty much anywhere you go. And so I felt like I was getting best of both worlds. I can do everything I wanna do and I can be a mom at the same time. And I loved that. Um, so yeah, besides like COVID interfering, it was pretty chill. Like I got to still be the person I wanted to be. I actually really like that COVID hit when I had a baby. Like of all the times to have COVID come into your life, um, or a pandemic, I should say. It was really convenient because now with a two-year-old, if we were locked inside every day for a year, I would go insane as I'm sure many of you did. But again, a baby can be very chill. My baby was really chill. And so I just got such intimate one-on-one -on -one time with him. Not to say there weren't hard moments. The pandemic was hard on all of us but it was the best time to be locked into my house. And also I was exclusively breastfeeding. And so I never had to worry about like, oh, is baby gonna get fed? Because I wasn't going out to an event. We couldn't even go to like the dentist. Like there was no real opportunity when I needed a sitter cause I couldn't go out. And so 
breastfeeding was made easier in that. Yeah, just something I've been thinking over the past um, few months now that I have, again, another baby, is that it's a lot harder trying to live my current life with a baby when I'm not in a pandemic and I want to do things again. <laughs> and now that Rook has gotten older and he has his own opinions, his own... Um, his own feelings about things, uh, it's changed a lot and I'm losing a lot of those freedoms and it it's hard when I wasn't really expecting it so much. It's not that Rook having opinions was the issue, it was Rook having opinions and still kind of being a baby. Because now Rook has opinions we can like talk things out and find a solution for both of us sometimes not all the time but this is really just me like trying to understand what's going on in my life at that moment i've talked about this in previous videos but there was a lot going on this past year a lot of factors that were making me upset and so i didn't really know what was causing what not to, like and to re-emphasize yes at this point, motherhood was not treating me very well because I went from full freedom of baby life to no freedom of one-year-old life, relatively no freedom, and just being confused in not enjoying motherhood anymore when I was loving it before and not knowing what this was going to turn into in the future either. Like, is it always going to be like this and until they get into kindergarten or... I was just very confused. I also just saw so many moms online, not all of them, there's a lot of moms online who like share real motherhood, but I saw a lot of them who have like so many kids and are like so happy. <laughs> and not to say that they're lying about it, but I think maybe sometimes they hide some of the hardships that come with having a lot of kids or just kids in general. Okay, so yeah like i'm sure there are you know influencers out there who don't show the hard times and to be fair a lot of parents just don't want to show their toddlers having meltdowns etc very valid and i think the key here is that the moms i'm talking about have multiple kids and i actually heard some of them say specifically like it gets easier after you've had your first in the sense that they self-entertain and sometimes kind of watch over each other a little bit depending on the personalities. And so when I had a one-year-old who's wrecking havoc all over the house, like most one-year-olds do, I'm always like chasing after them as opposed to having a three-year-old kind of watching over the one-year-old or at least just keeping them entertained and playing together. This is my understanding of it. Again, I haven't actually experienced it yet, but yeah, I definitely thought like, oh, all these moms must just be lying about how joyous motherhood is, when really I think they're just in a different stage than me because I have left that stage that I was in in this video and I've, I've kind of like seen the light now. <laughs> um, and so when Josh and I decided to have children, we thought like, oh, maybe we'll have four. And maybe, I say this all the time, maybe we'll still have four, but right now that sounds so scary because I feel like I only have so much independence left that the more kids I add on, the smaller and smaller that's gonna get, right? Funny enough, I feel like I have more independence now than I did when I filmed this. I guess now is a good time to get into maybe why that mindset has shifted, but I've said this before, I say it to all my friends with kids, especially as their kids start like um, getting closer to the age of one. For myself, the age of one is very difficult because your kid's trying to destroy the house, destroy themselves, especially when a lot of our hobbies include being outside that's the age when your kid wants to eat everything and, you know, kill themselves through choking. Um, or you take them to a friend's house and they just want to touch everything. So I felt like I couldn't go anywhere because it would be too much effort. But even when I stayed home, like you need your eyes on your child all the time. It felt like, like I couldn't go brush my teeth even because even with a baby safe home, 
there's still ways your kid can hurt themselves in the two minutes it takes to brush your teeth, right? Whereas now, with a two-year-old, he just, it's a lot more chill. Like, he plays, I play with him, tantrums are a thing now, but that's fine. But he's not trying to kill himself or destroy the house, and that's the biggest change. And I have a baby on top of this, but it's still easier than it was when I filmed this. And that's where a lot of my confusion was coming from, of just like, or maybe the reason why I put this video out was because I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't, I didn't expect it to be so hard at the age of one. So how was I supposed to expect it to be easier moving forward? I just didn't know. So maybe it was a bit preemptive putting a video out like that, saying that I don't love motherhood. But again, I was just really confused and I didn't want to keep putting on this face of like, I love this because I've been saying this whole time, I love this and not actually feeling that. Yeah, I guess we'll keep going and see what else I say. Um, and the toddler years are, it hasn't even been a year yet, but toddlers are a whole new ball game. Um, and they just require so much more of you and, what's up, do you want your sleep sack off? And I don't want it to come off as selfish because I don't think it is, but it's hard when you can't follow your own dreams and ambitions because you have a child that needs a lot from you. Again, I went into this thinking like, I'm going to be equal parts me and what I want and equal parts mom, which isn't realistic, but I really thought I could <laughs> for some reason. And I've done a lot of like reshaping of my mindset on that, looking a lot more at the big picture of I only have five years with this boy until he's in school and I have like seven hours a day or what, however many hours it is um, to pursue things of my own. Also just hearing some other moms talk about it too that you shouldn't try to be balancing it all because you can't balance it. There is no real balance. Something's always going to be falling short and so I'm, I've just been taking on that mindset of like, I'm going to spend these few years trying to really focus on motherhood and I can pursue whatever the hell I want after that, you know? Not to say that I'm just going to not be me in the meantime. I'm still myself and I'm still finding the time to fulfill my wants uh, to an extent, like enough that I feel like my cups are filled and I'm also being a good mom. I think anyways. <laughs> With a lot of those freedoms being taken away, I also have turned into a homebody, which I didn't expect for myself. And I don't know how much of that is from motherhood and how much is from the pandemic. This is still a question I ask myself <laughs> to this day, because again, I became a mom when we entered the pandemic. We also moved further away from our friends and family and with kids, it's harder to just casually go see people. And I'm very satisfied in being a homebody now. It was just kind of a weird switch I didn't expect. I still like get my social time in, but I think it's I'm better off being a homebody as a stay at home mom. It's just better for everyone, you know? And some people have said to me online like, oh, well, like you can, why don't you just like stop being a stay-at-home mom and go get a job and I that is an option but it still isn't our best option because I would like to be there with Rook to raise him and daycare is very expensive and it's just more complicated than that. If you had asked me four months ago if I would rather be a stay-at-home mom or work full-time as a mom out of the house, I would have said work full-time out of the house. And my mindset has completely flipped on that. I've actually had some friends call me out on that and be like, what the heck, you were just saying that you hate staying home or that it doesn't fulfill you and you would much rather go to work. For one, pregnancy was really hard. So once I wasn't pregnant anymore, I felt a lot better. And again, I'm just really trying to reframe my mindset on the bigger picture of what's going on here. Yes, I still have those big aspirations of a career, whatever that may be, but I'm okay now with putting that on pause and picking it up again in 
five years, whatever it is. And really seeing the value in me being home with my kids because already seeing how much Rook has grown and how his first words aren't necessarily the words he's using anymore. Like he used to say Wawa for water, now he says water. So just like getting that firsthand experience of this little kid slipping through my fingers a little bit, I'm like, no, like I really need to be home and getting the most out of this for myself and for Rook and Finn. Um, and I got a lot of life left in me, hopefully anyways. So there's like lots of time for those other things. I like having a clean house, but I'd rather just not be home so it stays clean rather than being home and having to clean it all the time. Um, you guys know I don't like cooking and so much of motherhood feels like it's uh, all about cooking. Like I have to feed a child three times a day. That's so much work for someone who hates it. I definitely have gotten over that stress of having to cook for Rook every day. Um, I've found solutions for days when I don't feel like cooking, just like pre-made stuff or like charcuterie board type meals. And I'm just kind of used to it at this point. I still, most nights don't cook dinner, but I try and do everything else so that Josh is in a good enough mindset to cook. If you don't know, he loves cooking. It's just sometimes a lot for him to, you know, work a full day at work and then come home and cook. So I try really hard to Again, stay on top of everything else so that he has the energy to do that. Um, sometimes we eat out, etc. And as for the cleaning stuff, again, it just kind of is second nature now. I was listening to Hey Shayla, her podcast, and she talked about, she was interviewing someone who was saying that it takes two years for your mindset to like fully shift into motherhood or something like that. And I definitely align with that where some of these struggles I was talking about I feel like are just normal part of my day-to-day -day and I don't like think twice about them now. I am very excited for when I get to put our children into school and get some free time to myself. I I really just need things that are my own and it's really hard to get that. You can just tell the desperation. <laughs> I I can't say right now I'm excited for Rook to go to school. I, at that time, was really itching for any hour, just an hour to have to myself. But now that I'm not pregnant anymore and I'm not napping for Rook's whole nap, I feel like his nap time is enough downtime for me to get things done that make me happy and hang out with Finn. I like hanging out with Finn during Rook's nap because um, he doesn't get as much attention as I'd like him to get. Also, back to what I said at the beginning of this video, Rook was on a nap strike apparently, so obviously I was having a hard time because I wasn't getting any breaks. I've been dreaming about when I can um, send all the kids to school and um, just spend my day working and renovating a house because whether it's this house or another house we're gonna have projects on the go and I love working with my hands I love building things if only I had known that I would already be doing this in a year's time like I said during Rook snap I can do whatever I want so I have been renovating the house recently I have been doing some work and hanging out with Finn I feel like I'm kind of doing it all things fall short don't get me wrong but i feel really rounded out right now and it like i said if only i had known that this was coming down the line sure i would love eight hours to work on the house but an hour every other day is still like good enough the other thing that i think a lot of moms can relate to is that it's so one-sided and thankless being a parent um, not all the times, but sometimes it can feel that way. Um, you know, like the worst is when you, especially I don't like cooking, you spend time making a meal for your child and they, they're so hungry, they can't wait, and then you put it in front of them and they don't eat it and they throw it around. It's so discouraging. It's so sad. <laughs> like, I don't feel like this at all anymore. I don't feel like it's thankless work. Literally, Rook says, thanks mom, like five times a day and it melts your heart and makes you feel like it's all worth it because he actually is obviously thankful for what I'm doing. 
and sometimes he says it prompted sometimes unprompted and that's when it's really special like I'll do the littlest thing and he's like thanks mom oh, yeah so it's funny it's definitely funny watching this back and forgetting all those struggles I was having oh that's the thing okay I wanted to talk about how like it's still worth it. Like, I don't want to discourage you from having kids. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to lead this conversation into is that like, as hard as it is and as many sacrifices as I've made, as you've made, there's still so many reasons to be thankful for it. This almost feels like I'm trying to convince myself, <laughs> but I don't think that's where I was coming from or I'm pretty like, I remember that it's not where I was coming from. I just needed some more time for myself and not just chasing a toddler all day. I needed some time for myself because I still loved my child. I loved all the fun things that come with it. I just was feeling completely drained. At the same time, it's balanced out with the lowest lows, like the complete exhaustion, no breaks. Like if you just need a second, sometimes you don't get that. Like not getting basic needs like brushing your teeth or taking a shower or getting to eat your meal without someone yelling at you. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Whoopsies, text messages. Um, not being able to eat my breakfast, that was a real thing. Or not being able to sit with my coffee and drink my coffee. Weird how quickly you forget these things. Um, Cause now like, I'll sit at the table, eat my breakfast, drink my coffee, Rook will play, he'll come and take a bite of my food, but like, that was really hard. All I wanted was like 10 minutes to eat and drink and then like get on with it, and I didn't get that. The other thing is, I'm not sure how much of this is just a now problem. Um, maybe I just don't like mothering toddlers, <laughs> which I think a lot of people can relate to, because um, I loved mothering a baby. No, oh, I just didn't love mothering toddler babies. <laughs> baby toddlers. Baby toddlers. That's a better way of putting it. But I feel like, or I'm very certain, once uh, the kids are older, specifically when they're adults, I think I'm going to be so grateful that I did this. I needed that much perspective to get through it, was thinking of them as adults. Or just, I had the one at the time. Yeah, I think that's what all I wanted to say. I have no regrets. I'm so excited that I have Rook. He's so amazing. It's just, it's, being a mom is not quite what I thought it would be. It's, it's a lot. Oh, it's so sad watching that because I feel quite differently about it now, or at least I've forgotten a lot of those struggles, the specific details. Like, I can say very confidently that I love motherhood. I'm really enjoying myself right now. And it's all just seasons. I didn't know it would get easier. Just having a two-year-old is vastly different from a one-year-old. And I, um, I'm a little bit worried about when Finn is one and I have to go through that again. But again, I already have Rook, who's going to, you know, not help parent by any means, but like, they're gonna play together and distract the one-year-old from killing himself a little bit. So I'm not as worried about it this time around. And I have the foresight of knowing that it's just a one-year-old thing. One more time, this is just my experience. You might love one-year-olds. It's very interesting how a lot of parents find different stages um, difficult, but this was my case. Yeah, I definitely don't regret putting that video out because I needed to see something like that at the time, knowing that I wasn't the crazy one having a hard time. But I think I re also really needed to see this video to know it's not gonna be 18 years until you get yourself back. I shouldn't say that because I don't necessarily have myself back, but I'm happy, so like, what's the difference, right? Or like, why does that matter if I'm the person I was at 24? Do I really need that? And I also know that I am going to get those hobbies back if I so choose. Um, some of the hobbies I don't have time for now, uh, and that's fine. Yeah, um, I definitely very much feel for Ashley in 2021. That's what year that was. And things have changed a lot since, so. Anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. 
I hope you enjoyed this kind of follow-up on how I'm doing with motherhood. Very much enjoying it. It's still very busy. Two-year-olds have a lot of energy, don't get me wrong, but it's a hell of a lot easier than last year. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.